Hey guys, in this video we're going to share a long lost secret that has been used by the game's greatest players and it's one secret that I promise if you put it in place and do your game, you're going to see dramatic results very, very fast. So if you want to find out what that is, stick around. Hey guys, we're Bo and Shannon. We're the co-founders of School of Lifetime Low Rounds and In The Zone Academy. Hey guys, look, we're on a mission to help 100,000 golfers over the next five years to shoot their new Lifetime Low Rounds. And look, the reason why we made this channel is because we know a lot of golfers out there are struggling or even you know, on the verge of quitting the game. And look, we do not want you to be one of them. So please make sure you follow us on this journey. Subscribe, um, like this video, comment below. We want to engage with you and uh, make sure that you get the help that you need. So with that it. Let's dive in. You know, I'll never forget. Um, I remember reading this book. It was called The Golfer's Mind by Bob Rattel. And many of you may have already read this book um, before, and you may even recall the story I'm about to share. But um, in chapter two of that book, I'll never forget where Bob tells the story of Sam Sneed attending one of his seminars. And if you don't know who Sam Sneed is, you need to because he's actually tied with Tiger Woods as the all-time leader in PGA Tour wins. And now the amazing thing about this story was Sam was already pretty much retired from the game and he was attending one of Bob's um, seminars. And Sam goes on to share the biggest reason why he dominated on the PGA Tour back in his prime. And this was it. He said, Bob, um, I really wish I had someone like you um, back in my days, because when things fell off the tracks, it would have been great to have somebody to kind of push me back to what ultimately got me the success that I had. And this was it. He said, every night um, before I play a round of golf, I would go to bed and I would sit there laying in bed and I would visualize, you know, playing the perfect round the next day. He said, I would get through each shot one after another, after another, and he would visualize playing the absolute best shot. And he would sometimes fall asleep after hole seven, maybe it was hole 12, hole 13. Um, it was rarely that he would actually complete a full round. And so he would go to bed, sleep great, wake up feeling great, um, have an awesome routine in the morning. And he would go about very um, enthusiastic about that day's round. And sure enough, it would be almost I, almost the same as how he would visualize and he would play a great round and he would dominate. Now, here's the thing. He said when things started falling off the tracks, it was when he missed a putt and he started dwelling on why he missed that putt. And then it got him into what we call the left side of the brain. And unfortunately, he went away from got what got him success up to this point, and he entered a slump in his career. And had he had someone or his earlier coach to basically show him this again, he would have gotten out of it much faster, which leads into three points that we're going to share that's going to radically change your game. So visualization or mental imagery, it, those words have been exchanged back and forth. Uh, but here's the thing when it comes to mental imagery and visualization, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. But here's the thing. Point number one, your brain and your body, we basically we think we want to incorporate five senses, right? And so actually when it comes to mental imagery, we like using seven senses instead of just five. What do I mean by that? It's like this. Okay, you have your five senses. You've got sight, hear, taste, smell, and touch. That's your five senses. But you also need to add in these two other senses, which would be like limb movement, your body movement. Like for example, in golf, being able to feel the swing that as well but here's the other thing that can be vital and crucial to, to your mental imagery and that is also adding your emotion behind it what do i mean by emotion emotion can be there's different types of emotions you have you have anger you have an aggressiveness you have a calmness you know like when it comes to putting for example your your emotion is going to be different when you tee off versus like when you're putting for example 
tee off, you want to smash it, you have an, an, an adrenaline that's kind of going on. But, you know, if you use that same adrenaline going into putting, you're not trying to drive the ball when you're putting, right? So you want to switch that emotion around more of a, 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 a calmness, so to speak, when you're, when you're using that. So here's the thing about the brain. The brain is absolutely amazing when it comes to mental imagery. Okay, and using these sensories, most sights, hear, taste, smell, uh, touch, your limb movement, and your motion. The beautiful thing about that is your brain doesn't know if your body is actually moving or not. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. So what happens is they have actually put physical uh, electrodes over the body when people are doing uh, mental imagery. And what happens is they actually detect that the muscles are firing while you're doing mental imagery. That is why it's so important that you do the mental imagery. You can learn faster uh, when you're learning a, a new swing technique or anything like that. Uh, but also you actually have higher ranges of flow state being in the zone. Okay. Because of mental imagery. That is why we need to practice it. The brain doesn't know if you're actually physically doing it. Uh, for example, you know, you see it in the Olympics all the time. You, you see the downhill skiers. You know, they're at the top of the hill. I know it looks crazy. They're at the top of the hill. They're going, you know, they're, they're twitching and twitching and stuff like that. They're doing their mental imagery, but they're getting their triggers and their motions in and going in. You know, you see the freestyle uh, ski jumpers, for example, and, you know, they're doing twirls and, and like that with their eyes shut. They're doing mental imagery. You watch the downhill bobsledders. OK, going through it. Here's the thing that you may not know about bobsledding. They don't have but so much practice time when it comes to the Olympics. So they have to do their mental imagery. So then what happens is when they get out on the course and they're going down, it's not a thought process that they have to go to on when the next turn is. Everything's automatic and reaction. Boom, turn right, boom, turn left. And the same thing happens. And when you apply it, the golf is the same thing actually happens with that is, you know, it's not a thought process anymore. Like if you're in a certain situation, why? Because you practice it. You've done your mental imagery. That's the beautiful thing. And so what I mean is you have to make it real. When I talk about the seven centuries, you have to make it real. The environment's real. My motion, I can feel my limb movements and everything like that. And then what happens is when we start getting our practice in, okay, then you can actually start feeling your, the muscles, the twinges, that, that muscle firing that we we're talking about. And Bo's got some other things that he, you know, just like how to improve it with golf. Absolutely. So guys, like in golf, some of the practical things that you just heard Shannon share in regards to speed skating, how does this apply to golf? So let's just pretend like we're on the range, right? And we can actually see the dimples on a golf ball. We can actually physically see ourselves uh, approaching the ball. We can also see and hear people on the range that are down next to us and maybe they're talking. And uh, you can also even see where the sun is placed in the sky. You can feel maybe the wind that's coming out from the left and maybe there is like a slight um, I mean, like an ocean breeze or something like that if we're playing at the ocean or whatever. Uh, the other thing that could be taking place is ultimately when you're feeling your swing, as you're moving throughout the swing, you can actually feel like, hey, where's the feet pressure in your feet? Where are the pressure points in your hands? How's it feel when you actually move your wrist and you place it in a certain way in the backswing? And how do you start your downswing? Where's the pressure shift and transition of the weight? All these things we can actually start developing and becoming aware of. And more times than not, we aren't really aware of these things because we've been so programmed um, to focus on the technique side of things. And so this is what's going to really separate your game in a very big way. So the other things that you can also implement in this is like, as you're standing there on a range, you can probably smell the grass. Maybe they put fertilizer down that morning. Um, and these are all things that are really enhancing your senses. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you can even feel the emotion behind a great shot. So these are all key principles um, that is kind of the building blocks of visualization, which kind of leads into now point number two. Point number two is controllability. You got to be able to control it. Okay. Some people have uh, this thing where it's think, all right, it's automatic, you know, and, and stuff. And, and you start moving in different directions. What do I mean by that is this, you have to be able to control it. Okay. A, a prime example is this. Uh, there was a girl, her name's Jacqueline 
Hernandez. She was in the Sochi Olympics. Okay. There was a story that was done by the New York Times and they were going around and they were actually talking about visualization uh, and what was going on with the Olympics and how all the top athletes are actually doing mental imagery and stuff. And then they actually came across this interview that they did with Jacqueline Hernandez. And one of the things that she was doing was this. Every single time she got to a certain turn, she saw herself falling over and over again. And it was like reoccurring uh, of images of her crashing, going through one of the certain turns. This is what I mean by controllability. So the crazy thing about this, this is a true story. You can go back and look it up. Um, when she was actually doing her run, she fell in that very same turn. Why? Because she is she's programming her brain to do it. What does that mean when programming her brain? So what happens is when when that turn when that turn is coming up to her, she's feeling a little bit weaker. She's not sure of herself. You know, she's holding the poles a, a lot different, you know, and she's a little bit weaker, not stability in her stance, you know, getting low, going through that turn and all that kind of fell apart. And she she fell. And unfortunately, she did get knocked unconscious and they actually had to carry her off and take her to the hospital. She admitted that to to the New York Times. Okay. So what does that mean in, in golf? You got to make this, everything's got to be super positive. Okay. Everything is positive. You cannot be doing uh, shots of, all right, all right, I'm going to do a shot. And, and it, and every time I do my mental imagery, it lands in the water. Every time I do my mental imagery, it lands in the bunker. Okay. No, that's not what I mean. You, you can't do that. You come out of bad shots. Like, for example, a bad shot might be that you're in the bunker and you're coming out of the bad shot. You know, the beautiful thing about golf is there's so many different lies that you can be on. You could be in a, a, a deep grass, for example, you know, a, a heavy lie. And so what do you do? You know, you, you're coming out of that and you're hitting that perfect shot. That's what I mean by controllability. You are controlling that shot. Another proof is this, um, is Michael Phelps. For example, one time his coach came up to him, grabbed his goggles before a race, and I couldn't believe he did this. This is true. He grabbed, he grabbed his goggles before his race. He put them on the ground, and he stepped on one of the lenses and cracked it, just destroyed it. And then he handed it back to Michael Phelps, and he said, all right, now I want you to go swim your race. And we know this, that Michael Phelps is not – there's no – argument against it he is the best swimmer of all time he's got the most gold medals the most world records and stuff of all time of any other um and so it didn't even face michael now this was not at the olympics this was you know at a smaller event don't worry he what he's not going to do that to him at the olympics that'd be crazy okay but here's the thing it didn't even phase michael because what happened was he had already visualized it a hundred times going into if something happens coming out remember coming from a negative to a positive. So he had visualized himself doing a meet with, you know, a broken lens. And so it didn't even phase him. He goes on and he actually still wins the race with that. And so that's what I mean. Everything has to be positive. You have to control it and going through that. If you guys are enjoying this content, you know, I just want to make sure we highlight this. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe, like this video, comment below. Again, we want to engage with you and make sure that you are supported on this journey to ultimately playing your absolute best golf. So again, so you don't miss videos like this, uh, make sure you subscribe. Uh, with that said, we're going to lead into point number three. Point number three, the key to make uh, or break success in visualization. Because of you doing this, OK, mental imagery, you're actually going to play more rounds in the zone. And at longer states of time, studies have shown it over and over again with mental imagery that that happens. And so you're actually training your body, you're re reprogramming your brain, so to speak, recoding everything up here to perform at its highest level. So really what you're doing is it's mental performance that directly affects physical results. That's what happens, right? So we're going to give it an example, uh, like some guidelines and kind of open up the brain, open up the door, so to speak, and take a peek at what's behind the door of visualization. OK, so what we're going to do is imagine, OK, yourself playing a chip shot. OK, and I'm going to give you the circumstance. This is what the circumstance will look like. OK, you're standing about three yards off the green. OK, 
your plane or chip shop. You've got about 30 feet of the green uh, to work with, okay, from where your chip shot is to where the pin is. you got about 30 feet of the green. Most of it is on a slight downhill from right to left, okay? There's a gentle breeze blowing of the wind from, coming from the front, not from the right or from the left. It's You can tell it's coming from the front. The pin is out. You know, your partners have moved the pin, so the pin's out. You can actually see it off to the side. It's laying there, okay? And so then you're going to play your shot, right? Mental imagery, you're doing the chip shot. You're seeing everything. You're feeling everything. The limb movements, you know, everything's engaged. The vividness is there, okay? You're bringing it, you're making it real. So when you're doing your mental imagery, these are questions you can ask, like if I, with going with that circumstance. So this is what I mean by the guidelines of mental imagery. For example, these are questions that you can ask. For example, how far onto the green did you hit the ball? Okay, when you did the mental imagery, remember you had 30 feet of green to work with when you chipped it, how far onto the green until it landed? And then that would be the other thing. Did you have an exact landing spot picked out, you know, where you wanted it to hit? Now, some people, uh, Bo, for example, he doesn't actually look for the landing spot. He's actually aiming for the hole. The landing spot is not, but some people do. And that's neat. Sometimes that's favorable for you and what you like. That's the beautiful thing. It's custom to you. It fits, it fits your shoes, so to speak, right? So then the other one was how high was the ball in the air? The trajectory of the ball, how high was it? You know, what speed did the ball have when it hit uh, on the green and rolled? How did it roll um, to the hole? What was that line, for example, that it started rolling? How did it go? Did it go in the hole? Uh, did, it, did it barely go in? Did it barely make it, for example? Or did it go back and hit the back of the hole and you heard it hit, hit the back of the hole and, the, and it bounced in? You know, um, did you feel the wind, for example? Remember I said there's a front wind. Did you feel the wind? Okay, the other one is, did, did you look like, uh, what did you look like when you were playing the shot? That would be the other thing. Or right, here's another question. Did you hear the smack of the club on impact of the ball? Did you feel that? Could you hear the swing of the club, for example? You know, a lot of times on chip shots, you're not going to hear it because it's a it's a light swing. But you can hear the swing of the club when you're doing your your driving, for example. OK, and if you hadn't thought about any of these things, you now have a starting point that you can develop your mental imagery. OK, we're just giving you a tool in your tool belt. We're giving you a skill in your skill set, you know, that will definitely take your game to the next level. 100%. And guys, if you want to learn how to take visualization and mental imagery and take it to a totally different level, um, as Shannon shared, and you want to play more rounds of golf in the zone and do it so like on demand, guys, that's what we do on a day in day out basis with many of our clients is we teach a principle called psycho neuromuscular training which is something that we have trademarked that is ultimately helping more golfers play golf in the zone and by doing so we've helped over 300 clients um, drop at least 6.8 strokes on average um, in 90 days or less and that's even including our tour players in that data and we've even helped um, Savannah Vallabi, uh, who just earned her LPJ Tour card for a season on the LPJ Tour. So if that's a process that you guys would like to learn more about, um, we'd like to invite you to uh, book a free call with us. Um, this is a free call that we do a deep dive in the game um, and we find out, okay, is this something that would be very helpful for you or maybe not? Um, either way, just by jumping on a call with us just allows us to be the doctor, so to speak find out what's really working, what's not working. And uh, if it's something that we find that, hey, you may need to go see one of our colleagues, we'll be happy to make an introduction. But please um, don't miss this because we do not want you to leave from here and ultimately go on and quit the game or you keep being frustrated. Uh, look, we're here to help. And uh, again, like I said before, we're on a mission to help 100,000 golfers to shoot their new lifetime of rounds. And we're going to do that in the next five years, um, either with you or without you. Um, so please don't be that stubborn one. Um, go ahead, book a call with us, and uh, let's see how we can help you to ultimately play more rounds of golf in the zone. And with that said, guys, we'll see you on the next video.